Ladies and gentlemen, again, welcome. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, if we haven't met, that's because I haven't had a chance to come and say hello. Uh, my name is Michael Howe. I'm the current RUCI president. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much. Uh, this is also going to be webcast so that people can see particularly the honouring of our past presidents and we'll introduce appropriately and properly in a couple of minutes but can I just indicate that we have with us Paul Irving who will be seated out the front soon. Uh, Paul is waiting for Karen, she is in a taxi somewhere so uh, we hope that uh, she won't be too long. Uh, can I acknowledge uh, Admiral Tony Hunt one of our past presidents, and I repeat, we'll be introducing them properly uh, in a moment. And then uh, Brigadier David Lease, who is also one of our past presidents. We're expecting Group Captain Doug Rosa, but unfortunately, uh, Doug and his wife had an illness issue last Wednesday. So we've organised that uh, Doug will give a very brief presentation by Zoom. And in advance, we hope the technology will work. A warm welcome. I particularly would like to thank and acknowledge our past presidents and their wives, uh, Cecile and Priscilla, are with us at the moment. Karen is hopefully going to get out of a taxi soon uh, and be with us. And uh, I wish to give an apology from my wife. We both had COVID. I managed to give it to Wendy and she has now contracted another issue which in non-technical terms forbids her from travelling for any length of time. And could I simply pay respects to our Aboriginal elders past and present and in the future, but in particular could I pay our respects to Aboriginals who have served, are serving or will choose to serve uh, in our military. I'd like to show you what the Greeks call the Pantheon and that is a visual review of our past presidents and some of them are unfortunately no longer with us and so in that sense our today's anniversary meeting, we're 134 years old, is a, an attempt to not only celebrate that we are still around but also to honour and thank those who are able to be with us and uh, as some of you might know Gordon Maitland, uh, Tony Leach and Phil Carey are no longer able to be with us, they are deceased and could I present the apologies of Bob Trelaw because Bob and his wife are visiting family in Scandinavia uh, at this time and so they apologised as such. I'd like in a moment to, and so our special guest today meaning they're the group of people who are able to accept our invitation and with the exception of Doug Rosa um, are able to be with us, then what is about to happen is that I'd like to just briefly touch on two things, but we then would like to do briefly the following. Firstly, we'd like to properly introduce each of our past president, presidents. We'd like to acknowledge their service We'd like to invite them to give, and this is in capital letters, a brief <laughs> five-minute presentation maximum of what were the things that they felt were of significance or the challenges perhaps that they faced during their presidency. I mean, for example, during our last two past presidents, they have engineered the move to this facility. Prior to that, we were heavily dependent on the good graces of defence and defence facilities. It was a very different RUSI in that sense. And we'd like then to present each of them with a plaque, which is just simply a visual symbol of our thanks. And following that, we'll have afternoon tea and enjoy some uh, company. But I'd like to briefly just mention the launch of our monograph series, um, and we have decided, and, and our, one of our board members, Diana Figgis, Diana, if you wouldn't mind identifying yourself so people could talk to you later. Diana has taken charge of that. Uh, we have registered a symbol uh, and copyright, the Javelin Collection. And so we have launched, and uh, Diana's father was one of the coast watchers in World War II. 
So the very first topic of the monograph series is about the Coast Watchers in World War II. We would invite you to have a look at that. Please talk to Diana uh, during afternoon tea. And could I offer this challenge? We would like you to contribute something, something looking back or something looking forward to a monograph. And in that sense, Diana, on behalf of us all, thank you very much for the effort, energy and achievement that we're actually launching it. So well done. Thank you. It's on our website. And uh, could I just invite you to grab a brochure and start talking about it. And thanks again. Well, what I'd like to do is to begin with, if you could look back with me, um, we have with us Rear, uh, Admiral Tony Hunt and Cecile. And Tony was the president from 1998 to 2001. And so, Tony, firstly, it's a great pleasure to have you with us and Cecile, for you to be able to be here. Could we honour your presidency? Could we thank you for that period of leadership? And could I invite you to perhaps come and give us a very brief, re-emphasising, brief, <laughs> reminiscence, please. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, I'm now of a vintage where I can only vaguely remember last Thursday, <laughs> let alone what happened all those years ago. But I, but I did enjoy my time uh, in the RUSI presidency. Uh, it's, it's a great association. You should all be very proud of yourselves and what it's achieved over time. It's very important to, for not only to get together, but to remind our fellow citizens of our past history, including our military history, as a, as a if nothing else, a defence for the future. And, uh, and I commend to you all that you, that you continue to discuss with your fellow gentlemen and, and uh, ladies how important recollection is and, and how many great things we have to recall. But thank you very much for the time. A pleasure. Right. Thank you. Tony, would you please accept on our behalf an engraved plaque, which hopefully will be a visual reminder of your time. And again, thank you so much for your presidency and your leadership. Thank you. You're very generous. Thank you all very much. Bob Trelaw sent his apologies, and we will, at an appropriate future time, uh, present a plaque to Bob uh, when he and his wife return. Uh, Doug Rosa was, and Karen were planning to be with us up to last Wednesday. And on Wednesday we were advised that Karen has some medical issues that prevent her from travelling. And quite frankly they travel as a pair now. So initially we thought we would lose the opportunity to see or talk to Doug. But we suggested that he might try to do a Zoom based presentation and he did. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I joined the AUSI of New South Wales Council in September 2005, and I was then the president from 2011 until 2013. One of the benefits of working for AUSI is that human activities are a continuum and build on the work of others and the responsibility is then passed for the next person to continue. And reflecting on the progress of the committee, I recall the many projects commenced under the guidance of my two predecessors, Phil Carey and Bob Trelaw. Let's turn to the library. While I was a committee member from 2005, I focused on the library. Initially, we had a library committee which selected books, but then we developed a library development committee. This started many of the changes to our library system. The committee transferred the library card system to a TriMagic system, which could be accessed by the public. Ken Broadhead also conducted over many years the identification and holdings of our trench maps. In addition, we moved the records of RUSI from the lower levels of the Defence Force Plaza to the library situation on the 20th floor. We also disposed of many of the paperback books. And thanks to Jan Titcom and Theo, the library development project continued. In 2011, 
we applied to the National Library Council of Australian Community Heritage Grants Programs for a significant assessment of the library. This was conducted in 2012 and concluded. This assessment finds the RUSI New South Wales Library collection to be of national significance and makes a number of recommendations for its future management. This included access to the library system of the National Library of Australia. So with these actions, we began the process of improving the library. Patronage, let's move to that. During my period, I proposed we add a representative of the defence industry to our patronage to show the enormous support to defence of the defence force industry. This was agreed, and in 2012, we invited the Chief Executive Tales, Mr. Crix Jenkins, to become a vice patron, and he was delighted to accept the invitation. Let's move to defence support. During 2011, the access of our members to the Defence Plaza Sydney was extremely frustrating. Although we had a good relationship with the senior Australian Defence officers and the security staff. Thanks to their support, we modified the access system in 2011 for a number of access passes, including access rights, but all other visitors had to be escorted. In 2011, we agreed to have all representations at the Sydney Mechanic School of Arts, and this increased the number of visitors to our election in 2011. Strategic planning. A strategic planning session was held under the guidance of an external facilitator in January 2011. A draft strategic plan was developed and was agreed by the council in May, 2000, in May 2011 as the way forward for the development and operation of the Institute. International and security dialogue is another area. Thanks to the support of one of our members, the Institute conducted the first of our inaugural International Defence and Security Dialogues on the 26th of May in 2011. The speaker was Vice Admiral Arun Kumar Singh of Indian's Naval Command, who spoke on the global outlook from a South Asian perspective. Visit to the events to the library, uh, and our events. The conduct of events and continues under the leadership of Bob Trelaw, and we have continued to have a wide range of events which have been greatly appreciated by the members. Website. During the period, we improved the management of the website. Under the operation of James Oglethorpe, a councillor, and the office manager, it was further developed and continues to provide an excellent window to our institute by the wider community. Many changes were made to it to improve its appearance, ease of use, efficiency, and its interface with other links. The journal, the wonderful journal led by Brigadier Lease continued throughout the period of uh, I was president, and we offered the national president a column twice a year. Thank you, that's my summary for the five minutes. And in retrospect, I thank the association for the support of our activities and for the wonderful committee who contributed so much to the association during my period. Thank you all. Could I also acknowledge that uh, Doug has continued to assist Rusi, and along with recognising the role that Theo takes in producing that fine monthly newsletter uh, that we send out, uh, Doug and Theo collaborate on the content. So if you are a recipient of our newsletter, uh, that's something that Doug continues to contribute uh, from his home on the Central Coast. And we will be presenting him uh, with a plaque uh, in a similar uh, way. That's a very nice way of segueing into recognising our next past president, uh, and that's Brigadier David Lease and Priscilla, um, because David has continued to contribute to Rusi in a most significant uh, range of extra ways, uh, as well as his contribution as president from 2013 to 2016. Many of you would know that uh, David continued to edit United Service uh, until very recently when he handed over to Colonel Joe Matthews. Uh, I can tell you as recently as this morning, I read an email exchange where David was again assisting with United Service 
uh, in the sense of some editing challenges that were going on. And as you know, uh, David has remained a very solid supporter and is also head uh, or co-head uh, of the special interest group. So it's with great pleasure that I'd like to acknowledge, ask David if he could give us a brief review and then present David with a plaque to honour his presidency of RUSI from 2013 to 2016. And so could you welcome Brigadier uh, David yeah. Lees. Well, thank you, Mr. President, for that, uh, those words of welcome. I would like to uh, just uh, uh, say that Doug Rosa spoke about how one president sort of is a continuum to the next president, to the next president, to the next president. And that's really the way we've been, been working in our corporate governance, if you like. Um, when I took over as president in in 2013, it was uh, most of the policy decisions that needed to be made had already been made, either by the council that uh, was led by uh, um, Bob Trelaw or the council that was led by uh, um, Doug Rosa. And uh, my role was to ensure that those decisions which had been made that were effectively implemented. That was broadly what, my, what, what, what I did. Um, but the Council, during my period of leadership, we introduced three separate programs plus a series. We organised our work in three separate programs, a research program, an educational program and a social program. And then we had a series of services which we provided to members and to the wider community to back up those programs. And the, uh, the research program was uh, um, strongly assisted. Doug referred to special interest groups. We introduced special interest groups, got them established. There were three of them. One for special interest group on strategy, special interest group on military history, and a special interest group on defence industry. We made great progress with the special interest group on strategy and also the one on military history. We, uh, we really struggled with the one on defence industry though I must say. Um, we couldn't get the interest of our members uh, apart from one or two in the defence industry side of the exercise. However, um, the uh, strategy special interest group was able to do uh, a lot of work on the what was to have been the 2015 Defence White Paper, which became the 2016 Defence White Paper, and the Institute made a submission on that. We also made a submission on a, another uh, exercise that the, uh, the government asked for information on. I just can't recall the name of that, just off the top of my head. And we made two submissions to government. Uh, the research for which has been done by the Special Interest Group on Strategy, on Military History. Um, we not only uh, um, conducted or did research on uh, um, the battles of 1914 and 1915 and 1916 in which Australia was involved in the Great War, centenary battles. Uh, we had centenary seminars uh, in 2014 for the Australian Naval and Military Expeditionary Force uh, in 2015 for the, uh, the uh, yeah, new, for, for Gallipoli, particularly looking at the August Offensive. And uh, in 2016, we looked at uh, Fromel and uh, Pozier and Moke Farm uh, in particular, those battles. We, uh, accompanying the, uh, those... Um, seminars. The um, special interest group also arranged um, battlefield tours and uh, uh, John Hitchin, wherever he is, I think he's here, yeah, John's there. John organised and, and led the uh, um, battlefield tour of, uh, of um, um, New Britain and uh, particularly focusing on Rabaul uh, in uh, September 
2014, uh, when we commemorated the Australian Naval and Military Expeditionary Force, and uh, we had a series of military historians involved with uh, battlefield tours of Gallipoli and, uh, and uh, the Somme in 2015 and 2016. Uh, we, uh, our educational program um, focused uh, strongly not only on our lunchtime lectures, uh, we continued those, but we also pioneered nighttime lectures led by one of the younger members of our, our, our council. We, uh, we, we also had uh, um, an international dialogue in 2015 where we looked at uh, Indonesia and we had, uh, milit we had a uh, military strategy seminar in 2014 and 2016. Um, the 2014 one looked at amphibious operations and the 2016 looked at the new uh, areas of uh, cyber and, uh, and space, uh, the new uh, um, areas on which uh, defence was coming to focus. The services that uh, we, we offered um, continue to be the library, uh, Doug focused on the, uh, the um, new one, the uh, monthly newsletter, but uh, Theo also introduced fortnightly uh, events notices and uh, uh, we can continue, of course, with the, with the journal. Um, one of the big challenges we had, though, was in the governance and administrative areas and uh, I guess the biggest challenge, or well, there were two big challenges, one of them was our finances. Over a six year period up to about 2015, up to 2015 we'd um, operated at a total loss of $98,000 and we had to arrest that. We introduced uh, uh, fees for attendance at our lectures to cover the cost of lectures so that we could run lectures at, uh, uh, at cost and uh, we very, very reluctantly had to do away with the services of a paid librarian and office manager and that was a very, very difficult decision to take because one we had to do to arrest the situation. We are hoping to be able to get back, I understand the new board hopes to be able to reintroduce on a modest basis and paid staff, but we've been operating totally with volunteers for about the last six to seven years. Um, and that was one of the steps we had to take to arrest the uh, position we had with our finances. The second issue which Doug alluded to was the, uh, uh, the problem of working with defence and working in Defence Plaza. Uh, while Doug was running the show, um, we sent out one of our Vice Presidents, um, Air Vice Marshal uh, um, um, Short, to uh, uh, have a look at uh, all the various libraries in Sydney to see whether we could get any of them to take over our library. And Bruce came back and uh, reported to the Council that uh, if we wanted to do, keep our library as a library of national significance, then we wouldn't be able to hand our library over to any of the other libraries. What they all wanted to do, the University of Sydney, State Library of New South Wales, Mitchell Library and so on, what they wanted to do was to um, pick the best of our books and add them to their collection, take the rest of our books and sell them and make money. And that money that they made would help them maintain the books that they were taking from us. But if we did that, if we didn't keep the collection together, it would cease to be a collection of national significance. It would only have national significance because it was a 
a collection which had all those books which people could look at in the one location. If we cherry picked the collection, it would cease to be a collection of national significance. And um, Bruce said there were, there's one option. It's not open at the moment, but if we could get the Anzac Memorial, which uh, was then down in um, Castle Ray Street, I think, or, or sorry, the, the position was here, but the staff were down in uh, Castle Ray Street. If we could get the Anzac Memorial to take over our library, the Anzac Memorial didn't have a library. They wanted a library. The trustees wanted a library. If we could get them to take it over, that, that would be the only option he could find where we could keep it together as a collection of national significance. And, uh, well, I had a... When I took over, it was my job to negotiate <laughs> with the trustees to see if we could do that. Um, I, Brad Monero, who was the uh, senior historian, was very keen for us to do that and to, to help us. Uh, as, and he would like to link the two organisations, but we ran into a number of roadblocks. Now, getting us here, I was just organising the, with the the aid of John Rudd, who was our secretary at the time. We did the detailed negotiations and, and worked out the, the MOU to get here. And uh, the, then I was lucky enough to be able to hand over the responsibility for actually making it happen to my successor, uh, Paul Irving. And it's probably about this point in time I should let you get Paul Irving to tell what happened. <laughs> Well, before we do that, and on behalf of uh, Rusi and the board, David, could I present you please with a plaque, oh. which we hope is a tangible reminder and our debt of thanks. Thank you very much. Well, that's Thank very you. Thank you very much. And motivated by the smell which is coming from this side, <laughs> which is uh, very inviting, uh, it's my honour to recognise and introduce Paul and also to acknowledge Karen. Lovely to have you with us and thank you. And um, could I just say, many of you would know that Paul is a man of immense energy and an enormous commitment to a range of activities. So as well as being president and now past president, and he's extremely active and supportive, Paul is our library manager and one of our senior volunteers. At the same time, probably because he doesn't sleep, uh, he's president of the Defence Re uh, Reserves Association uh, and he's also taken on the role of president of Rusi National. Um, uh, all I can say is that I think this represents a great deal of not sleeping, tolerance from Karen and a great commitment to what we are trying to achieve. It's my great pleasure and honour to recognise and welcome our immediate past president, Paul Irving. Paul. Thank you very much. I, I just uh, point out there's a, a slight error on the slide there. I was actually president from 2016 to 2020. Um, and I thank David for leaving me uh, all the hard work to organise to get Rusi from Defence Plaza uh, to into this magnificent facility, which I see as our permanent home. And I see the library here being a wonderful gift to the people of New South Wales to celebrate the 100 years since the end of the Great War in 2018. Um, it was a monumental task um, and I didn't do it on my own. There were lots, lots of help, lots of assistance and lots of volunteers. I think the first thing I had to do is build a relationship with the memorial staff. Unfortunately, they were actually in, an, in a civilian building uh, opposite Defence Plaza. So I spent a lot of time talking to Belinda Mitrovic and Brad Manera and other staff there to understand what the, what the issues were, etc. Uh, it was also a major construction site uh, and you couldn't access the site unless you had a, a uh, construction white card and you undertook the uh, induction training course that was run by the builders at the time. Um, and uh, I'd organised to, to, to do the exams to get a, a construction white card and David was going to uh, do the same to, to help me because we needed two people. And then he became seriously ill and I was really desperate. 
So I turned to John Hutchinson one day and I said, John, you're an engineer? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, well, you got a defence, a, a um, construction white card? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, you know, is it too much to ask you to, to be in the, in the construction site here at the memorial at 7 o'clock in the morning, tomorrow morning, for a, for a induction program? Because you couldn't go on unless you had both. Grumble, 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 which I knew was a good sign if John was grumbling. Um, and he said, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Now, John was, was not, not much shy of 90 when I asked him. He's probably 89. Uh, and the next morning, I'm up here around the construction site just before 7 o'clock, wondering where John is. I'm looking at my watch, three minutes to seven. And the next minute, I, I spy in the distance, walking across Hyde Park as if he's on the parade ground at RMC at Duntroon. John Hutchinson with his hard hat his, uh, and his high vest, visibility vest over his coat. And he arrived at 7 o'clock. Now think about it. He would have had to get up early, have breakfast, get the bus to the station, get the train into town and, uh, and be here before 7 o'clock. It's not bad for a bloke that was almost 90. And that was the dedication of some of our volunteers. But the hard part was trying to convince Defence uh, that I wanted them to pay for the move uh, here to the memorial. Uh, and that was a very a complicated issue. Thanks to some, uh, some advice from John Rudd, we were, actually, actually, we were in a commercial rented building and we found out what the rent per square metre was that they were paying for the, uh, the space that we had uh, in Defence Plaza. And so I put a very detailed submission through to Defence uh, in Canberra uh, uh, pointing out that it was a win-win-win for them. If we left, uh, they wanted us to move, uh, they could then reuse that facility, uh, etc., and they would be saving all this money in commercial rent. Um, and complicated with that, of course, was they were refurbishing the whole of that building. Uh, and the way they were doing it, they had a, what was called the swing floor, and they would take everything off the swing floor, put it on that swing floor, and then they would refurbish the floor with that equipment, etc. New, new carpet, new workstations and all this, and including they were going to do it for the library if we stayed there. Uh, and so um, I was able to convince them that they'd actually save money by not moving us on a swing floor, but actually moving us here to the Anzac Memorial. Now that required the whole of the collection to be double plastic bagged, ready for freezing, because part of the MOU that David and John Rudd negotiated said everything had to be had to be pest free and the only way you could, um, uh, you could guarantee pest free of, of a library collection was to freeze it. So the memorial, the, the, the builders hired two um, uh, semi-trailers with freezer units in the back and we brought the books over uh, in tranches over a period of months uh, to freeze them for a week before we put them in the compactus. But that's another story. Um, it was on the, the day we were supposed to start the move and we needed to find $26,000 to, to move us. The, that was what uh, Grace Remoulis had, had uh, quoted Defence to move us from Defence Plaza to here over those period of months. They'd already, already packed all the books up in, uh, in plastic bags ready for the move. Um, and it got very tense negotiations and I said, I played the only card I had. I said, OK, if it's not going to work, we'll stay here. Well, and you can move us off onto the swing floor and bring us back. All the, all the faces dropped. No, no, we want you to go, we want you to go. So the $26,000 were found uh, and we moved. But then we had to work out how we are going to move because first and foremost, we were going from an area which is much bigger than this room, much, much bigger than this room, to an area about a tenth of the size of what we had. And part of that is we had to uh, have our own compactus. Um, which was previously, which was uh, something we didn't have in Defence Plaza. Everybody could walk around the shelves and look at the books. And thanks to the hard work of, uh, and compactuses aren't cheap, we, I think we visited just about every, every organisation in Sydney that had compactus, including the, the, the Reserve Bank, Ken's uh, old uh, employer, and they had, they had an electric operated compactus, which was state of the art except they had a flood one year and it, uh, it, it, it couldn't move anything because the, uh, the motors burnt out. But we, we, ended, we needed $60,000 to buy a compactus and we didn't have 60000 And thanks to the wonderful support by Michael Flynn where he's able to obtain sponsorship, we were able to purchase the compactus. Um, 
thanks to the work of people like Ron Lyons, who's an expert on compactuses, and we put it every, sing every way, which way to work out how we could maximise the space, and to John Rudd, um, we were able to uh, organise a compactus that would fit it in that space. It is very tight and complicate things that right on, the, on one wall in the compactus room, there's an internal door. Because when they built the memorial, we're on the, on the outside wall, on one wall, it's a hollow wall. And so there's another wall next, and it's got a door in there, so you can actually walk between the two walls where they can inspect all the services, etc. And so everything had to be designed on wheels, so we could wheel the table out, wheel the th other things out, so we could get access to the door. And thanks to John Rudd, uh, who unfortunately is not here today, uh, all of that work was done. Uh, he put the plaques up, he organised uh, the, the, the ladders, where they put the ladders and everything, it was all done very, very well. But the, the real interesting thing was uh, to bring the, the books into the library. Um, it was still a construction site. There were no paths, there was no concrete, there were no steps. Uh, they had bits of plank down uh, over the mush and the concrete and the mud um, and we had to bring it all the way down and bring it in through the water cascades which weren't completed, neither was the tiling completed. And when we finally got it into the compactus room, there was hardly any lighting. Uh, and we were trying to unpack the books, take them out of the plastic bags and make sure them, they're, in the, they're in the right order. Well, we got, we got there, um, and I think um, taking the um, situation that Tony Hunt uh, it indicated, it is a magnificent facility, it's a magnificent library, it's what I call the jewel in the crown of RUSI New South Wales, it's the reason for being here. Yes, it's very intensive to maintain it and, and grow it, but it's well worth the effort. And recently, uh, our former president, uh, um, who, uh, Phil Carey, uh, his family donated his collection, uh, 37 cartons of books, and realistically, if, he, if you went out and bought that collection today, you would spend more than a million dollars. That's how good the collection is. And that's been brought into the library. Um, and it's, uh, that, it's just one of the growth, it's one of the things that we do, and we get some, some really interesting people coming through as a result of having this facility. Um, yes, it was hard work, but it was worth it because we're here. And as I said, it's a magnificent facility. We have wonderful relations with the Anzac Memorial staff. They do so much for us, uh, and I really mean that. Uh, I had to take some books out, uh, 30, uh, our old um, War of Rebellion collection uh, to sell, uh, 137 volumes, 138 volumes. Uh, and one of the staff was here at 7 o'clock in the morning to help load up the car, etc., and take them out. That's the sort of support and assistance we get. And we must, one of the ironclad uh, issues we must continue is to continue that wonderful relationship with the memorial staff. Um, thank you for your, your attendance today. Uh, it's been a great journey. And I thank David Lees in particular uh, for not only organising the MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding that, that, that got us here, uh, but continuing to provide good quality advice for me over my four years as President of RUSI New South Wales and continuing to provide advice to me as the National President. So thank you, David. Well, thank you, Paul. And again, it's our pleasure to be able to give you this plaque and a tangible reminder of a very productive period. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Well, folks, we're extremely close to the end, and thank you very much for your attendance. But could I just say, on a personal basis, uh, I resonated with David's comment that he inherited a lot of the planning and, and where are we going from his predecessors. And I've got to say that it's been a very smooth ride coming in as president because of all the hard work that you've just heard about getting us across here and so on. And uh, I'd like again to thank all those who have been a past president and particular the recognition of those who are able to be with us today. Uh, it is going to be a webcast and it seems to me that one of the values of the webcast is that it gives our members an opportunity to understand what's part of the journey that we've taken and how did we get to where we are. And in that sense, I hope you've enjoyed the experience of listening to these very senior leaders uh, giving us a brief version of that story. 
which is a way of commenting that on the screen you can see the heritage of RUSI. And we, in that sense, are a very significantly older organisation in Australian history terms. The term Royal came a bit later. And if you look at our website, and John Howells reminded me, uh, the actual uh, history in more detail is listed up on the website. But if, in the unlikely event, you've not been across to our library, could I urge you to have a look because it is the oldest uh, library of national significance of a military kind and it's a great privilege to firstly that we have it and secondly we're in such a magnificent location. Could I thank you very much for being with us and celebrating our birthday today. We're going to ask the, the past presidents and their wives if they wouldn't mind we could have a photograph in this corner uh, or out this side and that is a request please don't eat all the good food because you're going to be there quicker than us and uh, we're the ones that have done the work you've sat back and listened but regardless that was a gentle and hopefully humorous way of saying thank you so much thank you for being with us